Resuming debate, to please the debar the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I don't want to reiterate uh, what has been said by my colleagues, but unfortunately it's necessary to reiterate to try to communicate across the way how this government has let Canadians down on what they have so long promised. Um, many of my colleagues have read back what the Conservatives promised in 2006, and they continue to espouse that they are the government that believes in open, transparent, participatory government. And yet, bill after bill shows that they are going exactly the opposite uh, direction. I think it's really important, Mr. Speaker, at the outset to actually read out what the promises were of the Conservative government when they ran on a platform of open, transparent, participatory government. And in fact, at that time, they were actually commended by Duff Conacher from D Democracy Watch as having the best accountability package and therefore Canadians should consider supporting them. Well, what did they promise? That they would give the Information Commissioner the power to order the release of information, to expand the coverage of the Act to all Crown corporations, officers of Parliament, foundations and organizations that spend taxpayers' money or perform public functions. Third, subject the exclusion of cabinet confidences to review by the Information Commissioner. Four, oblige public officials to create the records necessary to document their actions and decisions. Five, provide a general public interest override for all exemptions so that the public interest is put before the secrecy of the government. And finally, ensure that all exemptions from the disclosure of government information are justified only on the basis of the harm or injury that would result from disclosure, not blanket exemption rules. Well, Mr. Speaker, here we are. How long has this government been in power? How many elections have they gone through, continuing to promise to have an open, transparent government? And what is, are the exact measures that they have failed to bring forward in their accountability legislation? Well, exactly those measures. And it's absolutely reprehensible, Mr. Speaker, that it's up to the official opposition to be tabling the very measures that this government has promised. And so it is very logical, Canadians out there can very logically presume that we will have the full support of the government of the day to this excellent bill, Bill um, C-567, uh, that my colleague has tabled. He has tabled exactly the measures that this government has long ago promised and are necessary to ensure that we have an open democratic government. Well, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, why would we want to have um, open disclosure of information to the public? Well, for a good number of reasons. Um, how about simply that we have fact-based lawmaking? How about when we are actually, the government is delivering on its constitutional duty to consult, consider, and accommodate First Nations interests? Does it not seem uh, normal and reasonable that in fact it would be necessary for both sides to have access to the same uh, information so that they can proceed in a constructive way based on the same facts and information? Now, this government, Mr. Speaker, is actually bragging that they've received 27% more requests for access to information, as if that should mean that they are an open, transparent government. Well, Mr. Speaker, it's quite the opposite. It's absolutely reprehensible that there has had to be 27% increase of the public having to go through the complicated process of a formal access to information request. And while the law requires a 30-day response to that information, the fact that people have to wait much longer. And why is that critical? Because decisions are made every day by this government that impact Canadians, whether it's health, whether it's the environment, whether it's their drinking water, whether it's equal access to education. And they need that information in order to uh, make sure that their rights are being considered and looked after. Well, what are the main provisions that this bill is bringing forward? Well, one of the most important provisions, Mr. Speaker, and as a person who used to draft legislation, I fully agree and concur with this, with this proposal. The first amendment is to actually clarify the purpose of the law and to actually expand it to make the government institution fully accountable to the public, to make good record keeping uh, necessary to be held by the government institutions and that those be fully accessible to the public. So very clearly, an Access to Information Act, that is exactly what it should provide for. And uh, I commend my colleague for coming forward with that proposed amendment which is very straightforward. Well, why is that necessary? Well, we've lost track of the times where people have sought access to information and been not denied. Those of us who were in the previous session of Parliament recall when uh, the government absolutely refused to disclose information on the, the Afghan detainees and were up against the wall. 
uh, Canadians should have the right to information about the way that the government is conducting itself, not only in our country, but overseas. And it's very important to the reputation of our nation. Uh, the second proposal that uh, uh, the member has recommended, it goes to the application of the law and uh, the duty to disclose the right of access, that it should take precedence over other laws. Uh, the way that the law is put forward right now, Mr. Speaker, is it's rather an exception. And uh, reasonably, um, the proposal in this private member's bill says that we still would have uh, reasonable um, exceptions to that, including national security, and under the Privacy Act. The third provision that the member is proposing is on record keeping. Well, that's just common sense, Mr. Speaker. Um, how are the public going to gain access to information if the government does not actually record its decision making? And uh, we have seen circumstances arising where the government simply says, oh, there's no record, or that record hasn't been kept, because so much information now is exchanged by, by tweet, by uh, email or by text. And so this provi provision, I think, is very sensible and it would require the documenting of decisions, actions, advice, recommendations, and deliberations. Well, why would that be important, Mr. Speaker? Well, we think about a good number of critical decisions before uh, the country right now. For example, uh, the approval of uh, pipelines to the West Coast. We're seeing increasingly uh, even though departments are mandated by legislation to have the powers, the ministers, the powers to make decision making, increasingly those decisions are concentrated in the cabinet. Why is that significant? Well, this legislation right now um, excludes decisions of the cabinet, decisions by the PCO. So the, the recommendation in this legislation is we should have uh, more open access and in fact there should be a lessening of the exclusion and the exemptions. Um, and that cabinet confidences should be uh, not necessarily automatically excluded. I'm advised, Mr. Speaker, that we are the only Commonwealth nation that actually provides for a cabinet exclusion. Uh, there is also a recommendation that to add a public interest criteria. Uh, that just seems to make uh, common sense, Mr. Speaker. Obviously, when the government is measuring whether or not they should be holding information in confidence, if it would be in the public interest rising above all other interests, then that information absolutely should be um, released. Now, Mr. Speaker, uh, Duff Conacher with Democracy Watch has actually called this law, rather than the Access to Information Act, the Guide to Keeping Information Secret. Now, that may sound like a rather humorous description of the Act, but when we look at example after example of the struggles that Canadians go through to simply gain access to information, it's probably an apt description. Uh, Suzanne Legault, who is the Information Commissioner, has actually called for substantial reforms to the legislation. And uh, because the government has not come forward, I think it's incumbent upon all the members of this House to seriously take a look at this bill. They are the kinds of measures that she has been recommending. They are the kind of measures that a good number of legal experts have been recommending. And they actually parallel exactly the amendments that this government promised to make in 2006 and still has not come forward. Well, I would like to uh, close, Mr. Speaker, by simply speaking to an area that I'm deeply concerned about and I've had the opportunity to work in for quite a number of decades, and that's the area of the protection of the environment. And nowhere is it more important to have ac uh, access to information than the area of protection of the environment. Access to timely science, access to deliberations by the government, whether or not they will regulate a toxin, whether or not they will make a decision to protect a river, and on it goes. And uh, I think it's important to keep in mind, Mr. Speaker, uh, that this government often forgets or ignores uh, undertakings that they've previously made. And this government is actually committed to the North American Agreement on Environmental Cooperation, where they actually have an obligation to uh, promote transparency and public participation in environmental decision-making and actually have an obligation under Article 4 of the North American Agreement to publish in advance any such measure it proposes to adopt and provide interested uh, persons and parties reasonable opportunity to comment. So obviously not much point in commenting unless you actually see the details of what the government is considering. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.